All right, so let's talk about the solution for this exercise. So we are looking for, let's first of all just receive the value of num, so int num printf enter enter num, okay? And basically what we are going to do is to read this value and to store it inside variable num, nothing special so far, right? And now what we have to do is simply to, let's start with a trivial solution. So let's create additional variable i and use a for loop for, for that. Okay, so this will be, let's call it trivial solution. Okay, the basic one and probably not the most optimal. So let's use here for i equals to 1 as long as i is less than or equals to num i plus plus. <laughs> So inside of this for loop, we are going to test two conditions. So we are looking for numbers that can be divided both by three and by five. So this condition will look like this. If i can be divided by three without a remainder and i can be divided by five without a remainder, then in this case, what we will do is just, okay, not, not to print the result, we should also sum up all the variables. So let's create additional variable sum and set a value of zero. So sum will be equal to the previous sum, which we had so far, plus the value of i. And finally, we should print all the sum like this. So sum equals to percentage d and the value of sum. Awesome. So sum, awesome, amazing. Let's just build and run it and see what happens. So enter num, let's say 100. So basically the sum will be 315. And if we want to know also what are the values that are uh, included in the sum, so let's simply copy that here. So, and also print the value that we found, uh, let's say percentage D can be divided by both three and five. Okay, backslash N. And here instead of the percentage D, we will use the value of I. Awesome. So let's build and run it just to know what is part of our uh, of our final sum. So, so enter num, let's say a hundred. So 15 can be divided by 3 and 5, 30, 45, 60, 75, and 90, which seem pretty legit. And that's the final sum. Okay, so this solution for this exercise actually works, and that's okay. But uh, that's, as we said, the trivial solution and not the optimal one. What we would like to do is let's take another look at this program. Let's say we had, I don't know, up to a thousand. So we can see here a lot of numbers that can be divided by both 3 and 5. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105, 120. And what I want you to, 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 to do is to take a close look, a close look at the numbers that you can see here, which are part of the sum. And there is some rule, some similarity between them. And this similarity is very simple. You can see that we start from 15, right? Because 15 is the first number from one up to 15 that can be divided by both three and five. And then we increment it again by 15. So 30 is 15, 15 multiplied by two, multiplied by three, multiplied by four, by five. So at every, let's say, iteration that we can use at every time that we take a number, we simply take the previous one and add 15 to, to it in order to get its value that can be printed by both three and five. So in this case, uh, if we are smart programmers, right, and we are, I suggest to do the following. So we know every time we take the value of 15, we can simply add it to the sum. So this condition of checking all the numbers from one up to num, and if we have num, I don't know, like, a million, okay, what is it, a million? So this will be a lot of numbers, right? And that's okay. But the problem is that why do we need so much time to check the result, okay? Why, why do we need it? So what I want to do us, uh, for us, first of all, let's say that's, uh, that's the trivial solution and let's go with 
uh, the optimized solution. So optimized solution. And now what I want us to do is just to remove this condition because it's not necessary and also remove this one and also remove that one. Leave just the sum and the values that can be divided by both three and five and simply start this uh, loop from i equals to 15 as long as i is less than or equal to num. And what we will do here is not increment the value of i by one, but rather we know that every time that we will increment it by 15, uh, the result will be divided by both three and five. So what we will do is i equals to i plus 15. Okay, so that's basically what we will do at the end of every iteration. All right, so this will be the optimized solution. And let's go like this. Let's leave the sum here uncommon. Uh, okay, uncommon. Uh, we will comment it out. And yeah, okay, so let's print uh, printf trivial solution. This will be the trivial solution numbers. And now we will also use here once we simply printed out and found out all the numbers which are part of the trivial solution, let's simply print the optimal optimal solution, okay, numbers. So let's build and run it. Let's go up to up to 100, okay, shall we? So let's see, Oop, come here, so 100. So 15, 30, okay, so these are the numbers under the trivial solution. And the optimal solution gives you the same numbers, okay? So the sum is going also to be the same. But what we've done here and what we've added to this kind of solution is simply optimizing it and removing the check, uh, the, the, the need to check both of these conditions. So every time for every i you, you use this condition and then if this condition was true, you would also check this condition. So that's something we do not do here. We also do not, uh, we uh, eliminate uh, the need to check all the numbers between one up to 15, okay, not included, and then from 16 up to 30. So that's a hell lot of uh, less operation uh, that we do. So basically here from uh, when num equals to 100, we just use the incrementation about six or seven times, okay? So i changes just six or seven times, while here it changes about a hundred times, right? i equals to one, i plus plus, up until a hundred or hundred one. Um, yeah, so that's the optimal solution, the optimal way. I hope you succeeded to solve this exercise on your own. If not, please close this exercise, write the notes down, open up your IDE and solve this exercise on your own from scratch and make sure that everything works exactly as you expected for you. Because once again, guys, it's great that I'm solving this exercise for you. But if you want to practice and become a better programmer and to like to have memorized uh, all the answers and all the solutions and all the nuances that we talk about here, that's very important to solve these exercises on your own. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Vlad and I will see you in the next video.